So I've never played World of Warcraft. Are you serious? Which is strange because I played so many multiplayer online games back in the day, like RuneScape, Maple Story, and many, many more. But back in the day, my parents never allowed me to play WoW. In fact, they never even let me play Pokemon games. No, no. <laughs> That's right. There was a strict rule in my household that even if I was playing Super Smash Bros, I couldn't be any of the Pokemon characters within the game. This is probably because in the early 2000s, there was a lot of media coverage about video games and how some games made kids want to idolize demons and magic. So Pokemon is a game that teaches children how to enter into the world of witchcraft, how to cast spells. Your children knew, need to know there's a devil, and he hates them, and he wants to ruin their life. So any games that had demons or magic in it, or that were advertised within the media, that was a strict no-go within my household. And eventually, my parents found out I was playing RuneScape, and that didn't fly with them. So I had to stop playing RuneScape. I swear, this is a true story. This was my childhood. There was also another rule. Any game that had a subscription to it, I was not allowed to even think about. So World of Warcraft was an MMORPG I never got to jump into. And that's okay. I was happy to spend my time in Guild Wars 2. But recently, the game has been in a content drought for veteran players. And with myself feeling accomplished in the game by obtaining the armor skins and legendary weapons that I wished for, I ran out of goals to do. But that's okay. Guild Wars 2 is an amazing MMO RPG that allows you to put it down, and when you return, you don't have to worry because there's no gear grind. Now my interest for World of Warcraft started when I heard a couple of my work colleagues talking about Dragonflight. You know, the expansion where Blizzard implemented the Griffin and Skyscale mounts from Guild Wars 2, and they just copy and pasted it into their game. It seems that Blizzard is good at doing these types of things. Looking at the game industry, seeing games like Team Fortress 2, and producing games like Overwatch. And I had a blast playing the original Overwatch, so maybe I should give WoW a chance. But then I thought, oh, I can't play World of Warcraft. My mom and dad would, wait a second, I'm 26 years old. I don't live with my parents anymore. I have my own full-time job. I can spend my money however I want. So with that, I installed the game and was ready to jump into the world of Azeroth. Today, I'll tell you my first time experience of finally giving Retail WoW a chance. So once I made it to the character creation screen, I figured since I made a thief in Guild Wars 2, I might as well pick a rogue within World of Warcraft. After playing through the tutorial and making it to level 14 or 15, I realized I don't like being a rogue. Why do you ask? Well in Guild Wars 2, I play a thief that does ranged condition damage and can also heal their allies. They also have a form where they can go into the shadows and they have access to different abilities. This elite specialization is called the Spectre. So the aspect of turning invisible and always being within melee range with two daggers, this kind of playstyle didn't fit what I was looking for. So I stopped playing. Legit, I just dropped the game for a couple months and didn't come back to it. Then, just last week, my friend told told me he was looking to play WoW. I figured I'd log back in and give my rogue a shot, but once I described the class I like playing in Guild Wars 2, he said this. You give yourself a shield, um, and then you want to activate Shadow Form, which gives you like a hazy, like black mist, which lets you cast a certain set of spells, and then you apply your damage over time or your conditions. This makes me want to um, like hit max level with this class to see if it's actually like... Shadow Priest is a very fun class. That's it. A Shadow Priest is exactly the type of playstyle I'm looking for within World of Warcraft. So I ditched my rogue character and decided it was time to give WoW a chance as a Shadow Priest. First things first, playing the game with a friend who knows what to do and starts with you at the same level made things a lot easier. Even a veteran MMORPG player like myself, when I jump into a brand new game, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like I'm a baby all over again and I have to learn how to walk. I have no idea what buttons to press to bring up certain menus. I have so many questions about the game and just having somebody there to answer everything makes learning this game way smoother. And that one friend was yours truly. Someone's name right next to me is called Stanky Legs. <laughs> that is me. 
Wait, no way, really? <laughs> that, is, that is me. I am, I am Stanky. Like. No way. He was the one who helped me during levels 1 to 22. He made a brand new warlock character, so we were able to start fresh. He showed me that by partying up, we were able to make progress on quests together, meaning the mobs that he killed or I killed could count towards what we needed to complete each quest. We ventured into the vanilla base game for a bit, until my Twitch chat mentioned that I should go into BFA. <laughs> <laughs> now I wasn't sure why they kept telling me I needed to jump into a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> I later learned that BFA stands for Battle for Azeroth, a previous expansion where the content scales with your level. Immediately, we went from experiencing unvoiced content to content that had cutscenes, voice dialogue, and more dynamic quests. I was actually very surprised with the cutscenes. They looked really well animated. It was kind of cool to see the base game during the first batch of levels, and then make the comparison to see that a WoW expansion such as BFA has a new level of polish. They even had random jokes sprinkled in, like when I accidentally knocked into this guy's cart carrying cabbages. My cabbages! One thing I like about WoW is that you are not running into loading screens when you're going from zone to zone. This is something that happens all the time within Guild Wars 2 but the game makes up for it for so many dynamic events happening within each zone. The only time you will ever encounter a loading screen in WoW is if you travel to a new continent or by jumping through a portal that'll take you across the world. Now this one looks like it was made back when the game launched in 2004. So with not many loading screens, you are able to explore the world with little to no interruptions. Whenever I ride a griffin from point A to point B, I realize this game I'm playing is gigantic and I'm only scratching the surface. Now the combat for World of Warcraft, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is, and, and there it is, dude. To me, it doesn't truly jump into the charm that Guild Wars 2 has, as there isn't a dodge meter. So learning skills in WoW that can bind enemies down or stun them is essential. I realize it's probably necessary for me to get a mouse that has more buttons, because I have no idea if my keyboard has enough keys for all these new skills I'm learning. Now I'm glad I didn't use a level boost, because I would be completely overwhelmed. Though I'd be lying if I said I knew what every skill did. Sometimes I still get confused and don't understand what skills do even after reading them. So I go with the old system of, oh okay, this skill takes away some health from an enemy, so I better keep using that one. It probably doesn't help that I'm also getting heal skills sprinkled into my skill bar as I level up, which is something that other fellow players who I play dungeons with will probably despise me for. Which brings us to our next section my very first dungeon in the game. I was the healer for this dungeon, and once I entered the dungeon, a majority of my skills were gone, and I had to spend my skill points all over again. My guess is when you choose a healer, it gets rid of the spec that you've chosen, and I was a shadow priest before, so the game was like, well, everything you learned, you can go ahead and throw that out the window, and now you gotta learn how to be a normal priest. It is what it is. The first dungeon was pirate-themed, and my experience of dodging red circles on the ground in Guild Wars 2 definitely paid off as I was able to avoid giant enemy attacks that came through. This is where I realized I'm playing an MMORPG that feels like a traditional MMORPG, because my reward for the dungeon was an item that I couldn't even use. Now this never happens within Guild Wars 2, but I guess this is just the WoW experience. This made it so that when I got loot that randomly dropped and that my class could use, I was more excited because there's always a chance I could get items that aren't usable for my class. After completing this pirate dungeon and not getting a single item other than the one I couldn't use, I was kind of sad because I played all the way through and I didn't really feel like I got a reward. So my first taste of dungeons within World of Warcraft is kind of tainted. Stanky Legs and I did some more questing, but eventually came that time where I logged on and my fellow companion Stanky Legs wasn't there to handhold me in the game. That's right, I chose to jump into an MMORPG and start playing by myself super scary. It didn't take long though before I partied up with other players to complete quests and even met a player named Lithclaw who ended up explaining to me why my mount didn't go as fast as his did. Apparently I needed to go back to Stormwind once I hit level 20 to unlock faster riding for mounts. I didn't know that. He ended up showing me how to get back to Stormwind and taking me to the Mount NPC. He also helped me figure out where the auction house is to sort out my bag situation. Because I kept running out of bag space and every single time my inventory filled up, I would keep hearing, Inventory is full. 
Inventory is full. Liftclaw even taught me about previous expansions and showed me on the map with what areas were added for each expansion. So I gotta hand it to the WoW community. The first couple of experiences I had interacting with players have only been positive. And once Liftclaw showed me where the collection panel is to preview my character's transmog, I was blown away at how many appearances there are in game. Not to mention, you can play Barbie dress up anywhere in the world on this collections panel, which is a huge change of pace for me, because in Guild Wars 2, if you want to view all the armor pieces, you have to go to a bank vendor in order to see that. What you guys think? Do you think this transmog is worth going for? I really like this set. I'm not kidding. I genuinely think this is a really good set. I continued leveling in BFA, going from zone to zone completing the main story quest. Lithclaw also told me that I should enable PvP, only because I'll get 25% more XP. So if you see me leveling in the world of Azeroth, please, have mercy on me. And now that I recently hit 30, I'm curious to see what the end game of World of Warcraft looks like. And if you're looking to see my reaction on this journey, feel free to visit my Twitch channel sometime. I'll try and showcase my experience live as I make my way to max level. Overall, I think WoW so far is quite fun. So once I'm finished editing and uploading this video, I'm excited to jump back into the world of Azeroth. Do you have any tips for me? And should I be looking forward to trying Dragonflight? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, stay hydrated gamers.